At some point in my life, it looked like internet trolls were created to mete out their frustration on my pictures. I didn't ask to be popular. Fame found me, and I used it to my advantage by becoming an Instagram influencer. And now things have changed. Those who seemed to like me on my way to fame suddenly started having problems about how I looked. A billboard influencer, they'll always say. I never understood what that meant till Cassie, my friend, explained that the phrase simply meant I had no boobs or ass, not attractive and boring. These types of comments on my pictures on Instagram were the order of the day, depressing if you ask me. To be honest, I had seen how other influencers look, huge breast, thick thighs, slim waist, and perfect pictures. I used to think it was all about phones and cameras, but trust me, I did everything I could to inquire about how they had gotten that perfect, but I was wrong. They were just that way, perfect. Unfortunately, these hateful comments were getting to me, and I had sometimes tried to commit suicide to help myself from the pain because the trolls were inevitably chasing sponsors and business from me so much that my entirety looked lonely and boring. Towards the end of the year, I watched an ad that had a friend whom I used to know in high school. He was skinny and bald at 17, which made him the victim of bullies and trolls. It led to his transfer away from school. I wouldn't lie, I thought I had a better future and even trolled him sometimes but things had changed now. Jeremy wasn't who I used to know. I only knew he was the one by the name on my screen. He had a huge chest, thick biceps. His receding hairline had found its way to the front and had grown longer than it could have been under normal circumstances, coupled with a well-contoured face. So much that if perfect were a person, it'll be Jeremy. I abandoned the idea of committing suicide for a while and began searching for his contact from old friends who reluctantly gave me as they assumed I was hustling my way to get into his pants. In the long run, I got his number and casually asked him on a date. He immediately refused and promised to meet me at my home. That was exactly what I wanted. Can't wait, I texted anxiously. The day he planned to come over crept into existence, and he indeed showed up in a tank top and camo shorts. I could attest he was better than he even looked on the timeline. It's been forever, I said as I hugged his well-built body. Oh, Jane, it was meant to be, he patted me and dawdled to a seat. He was talking about my days as a high school bully. He didn't seem bothered. He looked happier and lively. A perfect creature, I mumbled. How have things been as an influencer? He flexed his muscles on the long sofa. I'm sure you checked my profile. My comment section is filled with hate and bitterness. All the trolls on earth built a fort there. I chuckled, smiling through the pain. That's true. I had done my research and properly understood your predicament before coming. Jeremy sighed. If that's the case, why have you called to see me? I need help. Probably some diet plan, exercise routine, yoga. Anything to help me out, Jeremy. I sobbed, beginning to feel emotional. Those things work, but Jeremy faded. But what? I pranced up from the chair to rest my elbow on my bony thigh. I'm only doing this because it's you. Under no circumstance should it be disclosed so keep it secret, Jane. He requested and I affirm, seeing no way forward than listening. So, there is a pill you'd take, which would enhance your physical attributes, hips, eyes, butt, boobs, lips, even eyelids, until you are perfect. There's a pill like that in the market? I wondered aloud. No, Jeremy chuckled. Then, it's on the dark web where transactions like this take place. I know about it, I said straight. Then I'd share the link and drug name with you. Check it out and use the pills according to the prescription that will come with it. He sat up ready to leave. Is that all to it? 
I gazed around. Side effects? Have you seen any on me? He smiled widely. No. Then bye. Jeremy sprung up from the chair towards the door, where we hugged and bid each other farewell. Before I got back to my seat, I saw his WhatsApp message that contained a link. Immediately, a text message popped. It contained the drug name, a username, and password. I followed his advice and followed the link. The interface was shady, but I easily navigated myself to the seller. In a matter of seconds, the deal was closed, with a questionnaire on my present physical state and what I expected. I assumed those were what they needed to get me the right prescription. Early the next day, I got my package in a paper bag. In it was a sealed package and prescription that read, one every day. Without further pondering, I took the first pill. In three days, there was an impossible turnaround and in two weeks, everything had changed. However, the drug was expected to last four weeks, according to the prescription. So I took a shortcut, two pills a day. Things had become interesting with sponsors and promotions coming my way. Surprisingly, I never knew haters had sweet words to say. My comment section was flowing with blood red heart emojis. I could testify there wasn't greater happiness than this. I had achieved beautiful fame. I constantly kept up with Jeremy and he was always worried about my rapid growth. But as a human, I claimed to have done everything right and even aired him sometimes. All was going well until a year later. I had begun seeing changes like my hair falling off my lips shedding blood, and my butt excessively releasing bodily fluid. I realized it was time I returned to my genesis, Jeremy. Of course, I had tried to contact the seller, but it seemed like he had a camera on me. Immediately, I messaged him, even with a new account. He immediately blocked me. Jeremy was my last option. I called and tried to contact him for a week, but it was all futile till I eventually went to his house to check up on him. From the walkway, I was getting a strange stench from his house, like the house was painted with excreta. I covered my nose with a handkerchief and walked slowly to reduce the bodily fluid dripping off my butt. His door was open and the further I went, the more dreadful the house was. I kept calling out to him until I reached his room to find what was smelling, a decaying version of Jeremy. Jeremy had decayed but was still alive. His body was wrapped in urine and excreta and his eyes were sinking deeper into its sockets. Jeremy, what happened? I asked with shaky feet. I knew what had happened. I was looking at myself on the bed in a matter of months. Expect yours. He either died or fell asleep, but I returned home to wait for my Waterloo. I was the type to fall in love easily in the weirdest situations, and I never had a problem with it until I fell in love with an assassin. Unfortunately, I didn't know he was an assassin initially, but in the long run, I found out who he was. But I had invested so much in the relationship and couldn't let go anymore. You wouldn't be affected, he promised, trying to convince me, even though I knew I wouldn't be able to leave him, even if he didn't convince me. What about the people you've killed? I feigned worry. It's simple. If you stay low and don't meddle in my business, you would never be exposed to danger, Carter affirmed. And I would never be your target? I asked what bothered me. It can't happen, and if it does, I won't, he said, but I could see the lie boldly written on his face. I silently hoped I would never be a target because I was just as guilty as he was. I was a popular dark web vendor, and he didn't know. A few months ago, I got into a million dollar deal with an Afghan who needed classified information on the US military. I had the document at the time of the deal inception, but before he made the payment, I lost the document to a Trojan virus, but needed to complete the deal, so I created a falsified document and sold it for the same price as the original. 
The facade lasted for two months until I got a text about someone on my trail from Afghanistan. I had it registered that I had gotten myself an enemy from Afghanistan and Carter was my weak link and so was I to him. On one of his busy days, he got back from an assassination with his body all bruised and blood drenched. He usually made sure I never saw him in his uniform to keep me innocent but he didn't have the energy to resist this time and slept off on the chair. While I tried to change his clothes, I saw his silent circle black phone which he used to receive jobs unlocked in his pocket so I decided to scroll through it out of fear for my own imminent death. I had barely scrolled twice when I saw an Afghan client message unread about a new gig in the US. Just before I opened it, Carter woke up and yanked the phone away from me. He was always overly protective of the phone anyway so it was normal to retrieve it that way but what I saw bothered me more than him catching me with the phone. I had begun to doubt Carter and decided to find out what job the Afghan client had for him. The next morning he woke up with a straight face. His aura had changed. It looked like he was angry catching me with his phone but I guessed I was his next target. I opened my dark web timeline and sourced for a poison to kill him before he killed me. Luckily, I found an ancient Chinese poison blood red lipstick. It was easy, I just had to wear the lipstick and kiss the victim. The package arrived in the evening and as soon as it did, I texted Carter to meet me at a nearby restaurant for a date which he agreed to. It was a normal setting but I could see through his moody look. He walked up to me with a fake smile and kissed me. Your lipstick looks good, he blushed. It smudged. Here. I tried to clean it but he refused and wiped it himself. Halfway into dinner, he stood up to use the toilet after complaining of an upset stomach. A minute later, I heard a loud noise from the bathroom. Ambulance! A person screamed. Help! The work was done. I signed and took my leave. I laughed till my stomach cramped up. I was up watching funny videos on YouTube. I was supposed to be asleep so I could wake up in time for my date the next day. My boyfriend Josh wanted us to go to a breakfast place he found. A pop-up appeared on my screen and I tried to swipe it away but instead ended up clicking the link. I was taken to a site that had dark web written on it. Curiosity got the best of me and I went through the site checking what it was all about. I wasn't stupid, so I had a vague idea of what dark web was. I checked through the site and saw nothing that intrigued me, so I decided to go to sleep. The next morning, Josh picked me up and we went to the breakfast place. We ordered pancakes and orange juice and I had to admit that it was pretty good. When Josh went up to pay, his phone screen lit up and because I was such a curious person, I peeked at who it was. It was an angry message from a website. I clicked it and read through what was going on. Josh was on the dark web. And according to the message, he just hacked into someone's account and carted away their money. I quickly closed his phone and acted like everything was fine. How could he be this evil? I was a computer analyst. That was how I met Josh. We worked together for the same firm. I was better than he was and he teased me from time to time that I could pose a problem for him in the market. Josh came back and I managed to smile at him. We went back to his place to hang out but I couldn't get my mind off the message I saw. When he left me in the living room to go and change, I wasted no time to get his phone. I copied his server address and all other relevant stuff that I needed to my phone. Of all things I hated about people, I hated those who took advantage of others the most. That was exactly what Josh was doing. I got back to my apartment and wasted no time in hacking into his account on dark web. I saw that he had been doing this for about four months now. That was two months before we met. He had scammed a lot of people and was getting away with it. He was good, but I was better than he was. I decided to scare him a bit before getting justice for all those people he had cheated. I went to his place again the next day and we spent the day playing video games. It was easy to pretend everything was okay. I put my plan in action. I installed the mini speakers I had bought last evening into his house. I put one in his living room kitchen and bedroom, pleased with myself. I decided to stay over at his place, much to his delight. 
He had been asking me for weeks now. When he was asleep, there was a sudden noise. I tapped him awake looking scared. What's that sound? I asked him. What sound? He asked. We both heard it this time. It sounded like footsteps. Then suddenly a voice said, Josh. We both jumped up. I was trembling. Is there someone inside? I whispered. Josh quietly stood up, his eyes frozen with fear. I don't know. While still trying to get my composure back, the lights came on on its own, and the windows opened and closed at intervals. I screamed this time and started to cry. Josh! The voice was chilling and scared Josh so much. After a while, everything went back to normal, and Josh and I stayed awake the remainder of the night. Although the voice was my idea, I didn't know why the lights and windows had acted up. I was genuinely scared that time. I went home and decided to just finish the rest of my plan. I hacked into Josh's account and transferred the money to my account, hoping that I could find a way to refund all those people of their money. Stacy! I jerked awake, holding my covers to my chin. What was that? The voice came again, a high-pitched voice that grated on my nerves. There was the sound of laughter, and I refused to leave my bed. What was going on? I was the one scaring Josh. Why was this happening to me? You bitch! The voice screamed. No one will save you. Tell them it was a mistake. Scared to death, I called the cops and told them that someone was pranking me. They sounded annoyed before they hung up. There was the loud sound of footsteps and I remained in bed, sure that whatever was going to meet me would kill me. The door opened and I screamed with everything I had in me. Stacy, hey, calm down. It was Josh. I was panting as he came to my side. I asked him what he was doing in my house, and he said that he was coming to tell me something when he saw that someone had broken into my apartment. He followed the person in, but they escaped. I told him about what happened and how the person had threatened me. I was wrong to have pranked Josh. Now I knew how he must have felt like when I did it. Josh held me in bed, patting my head till I was able to fall asleep. When I woke up, I saw him sitting on the chair beside my bed, holding a speaker. He pushed a button on it, and the same voice I heard last night came out of it. My jaw fell open. Josh laughed at the expression on my face and said that if I didn't return his money in the next two hours, no one would be able to find me. I did as he asked without hesitating. I thought I knew him but apparently people could be great deceivers. I sent him his money back and berated myself. I should have just gone to the cops when I found out what he was doing. He waited patiently as I sent him his money and gave me a slap across the face. You're really a bitch. I saw you in the restaurant when you were going through my phone. You had the nerve to hack into my account. I guess you would have succeeded if I hadn't known what you were up to. How did it feel to have the tables turned on you? I whimpered cradling my face. I had no idea he found out. He acted so well that night that I totally believed him. Josh laughed again and left my house. I heard that he resigned, and that was the last I heard about him. As much as I tried to keep my relationships from being the talk of the town, being a very popular person didn't make it easy. Everyone wanted to know what you were doing, or who you were with at particular points in time. As a model, it was even harder to hide from the attention of the whole world, as everyone wanted to know everything you were up to. I also had another life on the dark web, the kind where people knew just what I wanted them to know about me, and the kind of life I wanted them to know I lived. I also had clients that I worked for, the ones who were only interested in the pictures of ladies that turned them on, which I so happened to be able to provide for them and to be sure that my relationship was going to be away from the whole world. I made sure to date someone whom we could only communicate through the dark web and who didn't know anything about the life I had as a model. I had thought everything I kept as a secret was going to be until I began to see my pictures spread everywhere on the internet and not just the dark web. How did something that was supposed to be private become an entity that the whole world could now boast of having seen at one point or the other? 
I began to lose modeling gigs, one after the other, most of them complaining about selling myself to other people, when a contract had already been signed to prove that such was not going to happen. I lost money in the process of trying to redeem myself from the debt of the company I'd put myself into, and just when I thought I escaped everything, my boyfriend began to act up. Most days, he came around after he knew where I lived, from everything that happened, and he forced me to satisfy him in ways I couldn't even imagine. And when I complained to him, he always said the same thing. Feel how you felt when you were showing your body to old men for so little. That's just the definition of a slut, basically. You shouldn't feel any different right now. I cried to sleep every night, but only to wake up the next day and do the same thing all over again. Most times I ended up with bruises on my face and arm and on other parts of my body, sometimes due to how much force he used on me, but that didn't stop him from doing whatever he wanted to do. I was almost miserable. There were no modeling gigs to keep myself busy anymore. Even the clients on the dark web, after hearing everything, concluded that I was someone who could not be trusted and didn't give me jobs anymore. And the height of it all was that I was suffering in the hands of a boyfriend I had only known for less than three months. After two weeks of going through so much abuse physically, mentally, and sexually, most of which I couldn't even put down in words, I decided to get my whole life together again. I started a new page for modeling only, putting out apologies with the hope that it would bring forth new things for me to do and new people to meet, and it in fact did. I got jobs that paid more than all I was doing before, and with that strength, I decided to face my boyfriend, or as I would want to call it, ex-boyfriend. That night, he came around and started ordering me around as usual. I fought back, standing my ground and telling him no. He tried to force me into it, scaring me and telling me he would destroy things even further for me if I didn't comply. Go ahead, I dare you, I said to his face. He looked very angry and short of words before getting up to leave my house. Good riddance to bad rubbish. I went back to chatting with my new clients.